How would you like to save 10 minutes on your next Sudoku puzzle? I will reveal the strategy I have perfected from solving hundreds of hard Sudoku so you can solve hard puzzles like this faster. And with that, it's solving time. You want to start by getting some easy solves out of the way. You might notice with this 2 cutting across the row, only one place for a 2 in block 5. And then with these 3s, there's only one place for a 3 here in block 5. And with the 6 coming up, you can solve for a 6 here, leaving the last digit as an 8. Greetings, friend. I want to thank Riff Clown for sending me this puzzle because it is perfect to show you where and how to apply sound to Doku strategy and logic to hard puzzles so you can solve them faster. Now, the question of the day. Do you approach hard puzzles the same as easy ones? Or do you do something a little different? Please, please, please drop in the comments and share with the other viewers. I love reading the comments and I read and answer every comment I see. You are helping me grow the internet's best Sudoku community. And so your next step in solving hard puzzles like this is to find digit restrictions from one to nine. Because in a hard puzzle, you need to go and find as many easy solves as you can. If you look at the ones, with these two ones, there's only two places for a one in block two. So mark that. Anytime you'll have two possibilities for a candidate in a three by three block. These ones are in the same row, so they're a pointing pair. Ones can't be here, or they block out ones in block two. So then now you have a restriction of ones in block one because of this one and this nice pointing pair. Nothing else you can mark or solve with the ones. If you look at the twos, uh, no other marks or solves with the twos at this time. Move on to the threes. And you might see with this three and the three right here, only two places for a three in block three. Block three is going to become pretty important here. How about the fours? With these two fours, only two places for a four in block two and in block six. Nothing else here. How about the fives? You might see with these fives, two places for a five in block three. Like I said, block three is getting somewhat restricted here. Okay, nothing else with the fives. How about the sixes? You might notice with these sixes and this six, you can solve for a six right here, displacing that one. Whenever you displace the mark, you can solve the other cell right away. And nothing else that you can mark or do with the sixes at this time. How about the sevens? You might notice two places for a seven in block two. And then in block four with these sevens, two places right there. Okay, nothing else with the sevens. How about the eights? You might see a solve here in the eights with these eights. Only place left in block eight is right there. And then in block one with this eight and the eight in the column, they're restricted right there. Okay, how about the nines? Let's see with these two nines. You can mark two nines in block three again. And then with these nines, two nines in block eight. And so we went through all the digits, one through nine. You want to go back through, especially if you had some solves, and focus now on pairs and triples if you can. So you might see with this two coming up the column, the twos are now limited to these two spots in block two. And since they're in the same row, that's a pointing pair. So two can't be here, 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 here. And so you are adding some more restriction here to block three. And then with the fives, with these two fives, only two places for a five in block two. And there's something really cool going on here with the markings in these cells in block two. Do you know what this pattern represents? Since you're only marking two spots in a block, and you see that each of these cells are filled with exactly two marks, these all have to be by value cells. They can only contain those two candidates. So the twos can only be here or here, right? And the fives can be there and there. This can only be a two or a five because if it could be a four or seven, it'd be marked there, but they're not marked there. So this can only be a five or a seven. This can only be a two or a four. 
and this can only be a four or a seven. You want to find by value cells if you're solving hard puzzles because these also represent a one step restriction. You solve one of these candidates uh, in the block, you can solve the other cell right away. You eliminate one of these, you can solve this cell right away. This is important. This is how you build upon the Sudoku strategy here. So I'll remove the color. And then what you might see, if you're focusing on these houses, rows, column, and block that have at least five digits filled out, column four here, you got a one, two, five, naked triple, and it restricts the ones that these two cells, since the one can't be there. So that, though, is about it. That's just about it. You're not going to get anything else looking for pairs triples right now. In any hard puzzle, you will come to a point like this where the easier strategies and markings no longer work. You know, these are the type of things I show in my free Sudoku solving guide. So you have two main choices at this point. First choice is you can look at single candidate strategies. So evaluate each of the candidates uh, individually, you know, go with each digit. Or you can look at by value cells. A lot of these by value cells, see how they connect to each other. Those are the basis of most hard strategies, advanced strategies. Let's look at the single candidate strategies and see how they affect our favorite block three up here. Okay, uh, you can go one to nine. I'm gonna go nine to one. I wanna show you something here. So where can the nines be in this puzzle? We're gonna color it using the coloring feature here in Sudoku Pad. Nines are there. So wherever you already had marks, just make sure you're covering those again. So you might see, if you look at the nines, you're looking for conjugate pairs. So a conjugate pair is like here in block three. A nine can be here. If it's not here, it's got to be there. So two possibilities in a row, column, or block. The ones that are in the same block are not as much interest as ones outside the block. But you'll see with the nines, there aren't any, uh, just two possibilities. Like there's three across here. There's, you know, four down here. Not enough restriction with the nines to find any single can of strategies. How about the eights? This is a good sign. You have a, quite a few eights. You have some already marked in two spots in a block. So remove these colors. And what are the eights? Now, do you see some conjugate pairs? Hopefully you do. Not just inside the block like here, but look across row one. There's only two places, four and eight, in a row one. So an eight's got to be here. If it's not here, it's got to be there. But then if you compare it now to another row, look at row six. Also a conjugate pair. Eight's got to be there or there. But what's of interest is that this is the same columns that you see in row one. Column one and column seven. So what does that mean? It means an eight, because of the conjugate pairs, either going to be here which would then remove eights from here and put an eight right there. If it's not here because of the conjugate pair, you have to have an eight right there, which removes these and allows you to solve an eight there. So you're gonna have an eight here and here or here and there. It has to be that way. And so what you can do with that knowledge is remove all the eights in the blue cells in those columns because an eight cannot be in any of those spots. If you put an eight here, you block out these two cells and what you see is in row one and row six, you have to put an eight in the same column, column seven. And that would break the puzzle. You can't have two eights in the same column. So you can just eliminate any of these blue cell eights in columns one and seven. And if you're pretty astute, you might notice that you also had conjugate pairs in these columns that were in the same rows. This is called a Sudoku X-wing, is what I showed you in the orange cells, and since it also could be done in these columns, this is a symmetrical type of X-wing. Either way you did this, you would get the same eliminations. But this is good stuff. How do we mark this, and what does it mean for our puzzle? Well, let's mark now that you only have two possibilities for eights. In those cells, in those blocks, right? There's only two possibilities here. You already had it there, here, and here. And what I want you to see expert skills, you have to now look at the impact on row, column, and block. You remember how we have this two, five, four, seven pattern here in block two? Well, look in block three. Five, eight, nine, two markings limited to the same three cells. So, you know, these are all by value cells. This can only be an eight, nine. 
this can only be a 5.8, and this can only be a 5.9. And this ends up being a hidden triple. There are other possibilities, but since the 8s, 5s, and 9s, those three cats are limited to those three cells in this block because of the marking, it's a hidden triple. You can remove all other candidates in those blocks. So now with the 146 already in the block, you have a 237 remaining in block 3. Like I said, block 3 is really the key. If you're focusing and looking at restrictions, you're going to get a lot faster when it comes to doing these solves. And then if you do this, look at the impact on row, column, and block, you're going to be able to progress even faster. So you notice this is a 237. The 2s are now limited to these two cells in block 3. So what does that mean? It's a pointing pair. Twos can't be there. Because of these twos, they can't be here. And because of this two, a two can't be here. Where can a two go in block one? You can put it right there. And then what you might notice is where can a seven go here in row one? Well, sevens are restricted here and here in blocks two and three. They can't be in any of those spots. You have a seven looking at this cell. This has to be your 7. That's a hidden single 7. And now you can see that at this place is a 7 there, and you put a 7 here in block 4. All right, what else can we do with that? Now you can also see with these 7s, you know, you can mark 7s in block 6. With these 2s, continue the marking, continue finding these restrictions. Okay, so that was the first thing we could do, but you notice now we're kind of stuck again. Didn't the, you can go down and look at the seven, sixes, five, all the way down to the ones. Uh, there is a strategy with the ones. I'm not going to reveal it, but if you find it, put it in the comments. But it doesn't really help you with the solve. In fact, what's better is to go, hey, I'm making a bunch of restriction in block three, block two. How can I continue to impact that? And it's by looking for bi-value cells. Looking for more bi-value cells that interact with block three. Start with a heavy house, because you know there's restriction here. You got a two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, and row five. You just need a one, four, and a five. So that could be one, four, five. This could be four, five. And this could be a one or five. You notice you just added two more bi-value cells. What does that do now an impact on block three? Well, did you notice, okay, I got a one five here. This here's a candidate with this cell, which is a five nine. Well, if we can find another nine somewhere, maybe you can make more restriction or make a solve up here in block three. You might notice, if you look at this cell, what could it be? It can be a one, but it can't be a two, three, four can't be a five six seven can't be an eight because of the x-wing of eights but it could be a nine so it's a one nine and then right here i'm going to fill this out to show you something here one two three four seven this could be a five six eight or nine you know something with these three cells they all they contain the three paired possibilities of one five and nine this cell sees both of the other two. It shares a block with this one, and it shares a column with this one. If this was a 1, that cell has to be a 9. But this is a 5, the only other possibility, that cell would be a 9. So no matter what value the orange cell is, one of these blue cells has to contain a 9. And this is a Sudoku X Y wing. And you find this by looking for the by value cells. And what it means is you can eliminate a 9 from any cell that sees both the blue cells. Okay? So, you can eliminate a 9 from right there, which would be 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 1, 5, 6, 9. Eliminate a 9 from right there. And, more importantly, you can eliminate a 9 from this cell right there because it shares the row here and the column there. Now, what's the impact of that XY wing? You have one possibility remaining. You restricted this to one possibility left. This has to be an 8. Okay, we found an X wing. We found an XY wing. What's the impact on row, column, and block? If you solve a cell 
in a block with a lot of buy value sales, you're going to create and unload a bunch of more solving, right? Because this eight now means that's a five, that's going to be a nine. This five means that's a seven, that's a four, that's two, that's five, okay? This eight can be displaced. You can solve this cell now for an eight. This has to be a three, that's got to be a two, that's got to be your seven. See how fast you can work through this? You have a full house across here, only a four remaining. And you got a 1, 3 right there. Can't do anything about the 1, 3 just yet. Now just continue to look for impact here, right? Uh, these 8s were quite restricted after we did the X-Wing. So focus on the 8s, right? You can displace this 8, solve that cell for an 8, displace this 8, and solve this cell now for an 8. And you've solved all the 8s. How about the 4s? Well, this 4 and this 4, solve for 4 and block 4. Displace this 4. You can solve this cell now for a 4. And then with this 4, solve for a 4 right there. With these 4s, you're solving for a 4 here. And with this 4 and these two 4s, solve for a 4. And finish the 4s in block 7. Okay, after making those marks, what can you do? With the 7, means that has to be your 7. And this is going to be your 6 to finish row 6. Which creates a 1, 5 naked pair right here. So the 9 has to be here in block 6. All right. And then with these two 9s, you can look at what we can do here solving. You need a 5 and a 9 here in column 5 with this 5. That's got to be your 5. That's got to be your 9. And now you can have two places for a 9 right here. We continue on and keep looking for restrictions with this 5. Those can't be fives anymore. That's a one, two, right? And then what you might see is this has to be a two or a three. With this three, that's a three, that's a two, right? Because you had the one, five, six here, four, seven, nine up there. Well, this two is going to displace that two. So that for two, disambiguate the one, two right there. See how that works? Got a full house here. Only one digit remains. Got to be a one. And with this one, that's a one. So there's your three, there's your one. With this one, that's a five. That's a one, that's a five. Attack those marks and remove that clutter. That's an, another bit of the strategy. This is how you solve very fast near the end of the puzzle. And you got three cells right here. You just need a one, three, and a six. Solve that using my neat naked triple trick. One and six right here, one's repeated, solve all three. This has to be the three. The only place the one goes right there, this has got to be your six. Okay. Attack these two at a time. You just need a three and a six there with this six. That's a six. That's a three. Follow these sixes. You know, that's got to be a six. Attack these two at a time. Seven and nine with the seven. There's your seven. There's your nine. Displace this nine. So, you know, you can solve that cell for a nine. Our last digit is a five. Now, apply the strategy approach you just learned to solve this next Rift Clown puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.